29 the prodigal son who 15 verses 11 to 24. Please turn with me in your Bible, please. Luke 15 verses 11 to 24. Amen. I will read a new fall. And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me, and divide it unto him, unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with, with righteous men. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him on into, him the fish, into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. And I will arise and go to my father. And will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to the father, came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. 24 and last, For this my son was dead, and is alive again, and he was lost, and is found, and they began to be merry. So the prodigal son in this story, the prodigal son, the prodigal means to be wasteful, reckless, and extravagant. In this parable, we learn of the younger son who could not wait for the death of his father in order to receive his portion of inheritance. The father, with little haste, gave him what he asked for. Now, this to me is strange because how can a father give his inheritance to his son and he's not even dead yet? Imagine yourself as a young adult asking your parents for a million dollars, not Jamaican, US stuff, million US dollars, just like that. And you believe that you're ready to go out into the world, make your own choices, and live an unrestricted life. And I'm sure that any young adult who doesn't know a thing about responsibility is going to think about living lavishly with this money. You know, you go out, you buy a man, probably think of buying a mansion, you get a, get a girlfriend or a boyfriend, buy expensive car, expensive clothes, lifestyle, you know, and etc. The things going on. You don't, you don't know what those young adults think in nowadays. And then you know in no time the money done. And it's the same thing that happened to the prodigal son. Well, hold on. Why did the father give the son his, inher his inheritance just like that? Obviously the poor boy didn't know the first steps of starting his own life. The father must have known what was going to happen. And you can see here this is displaying the father's wisdom. As and so you, after losing everything you had, you lose everything, the car, all the clothes, all the mansion that you bought, the mortgage, the bank around the for the mortgage, take away everything, your house, nothing left, and you are forced to work for some chinese man at a little corner shop just to scrape for a little money, to buy, a, to buy a, your, your daily food, the food that you're eating, 
Yeah. Probably buy like a holy bee from him. And then, then now you start stealing from the man. You start stealing from the man because you have nothing left. Yeah. After all the million dollars that you got from him, you just go on like that. Because of your, you weren't thinking properly when you're spending that money. Because you don't know how to spend that money. And in the same way that the prodigal son ran back to his father for forgiveness, in the same way, same way that we look for that supportive figure in our lives. But in verse 20, turn to verse 20, let's read again. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and com had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. So we can see that the father is already waiting for the boy to come. Yes. Why? Because he knows that his son is looking for him for forgiveness. And he accepts him even before he makes his apology. Personally, the first thing I would be thinking about is how to get back that money that awaits. <laughs> and we do and we would do this, I'm pretty sure that most people in here would think of that too. And we do this because of the fear and respect that we have for our fathers. Accepting our punishments and trying to make up for it because we respect that man. This is why the son did not deem himself worthy of being respected by his father and begs to become one of his servants instead. Let's look at verses 20, 22 to 24. But the father said to his servant, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again, and he was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. And we see the celebrations coming after what the boy had just done. After all, after all the, the bad things that he did with the money, his part of the inheritance, the father, the father in haste to give him a celebration. And through the father and the details of the feast, we can see the love that the father still had for his son. Giving him the best robe and a ring and shoes, killing the fattest calf for his household to eat. One would imagine that the boy had done something extraordinary and this was his congratulation party. But no, it was not so. The father was happy that his son had returned to him despite all his wrongdoings and welcomed him with joy. Out of everything we can see, the father is happy for the return boy. And in all this, we see that our fathers play an important role in bettering our decision making. Nine out of ten times that man has been down that same wrong road as you are. And he has made sure that you don't make that same bad decision in our lives. He's happy for you in your bad decision making, knowing that you will learn your decision. Verse 24 again. For this my son was dead and is alive again. And he was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Father's role is often mistaken in our culture. Because in most households, well, most households, you know, in Jamaica, the father isn't even there to provide that, all these good things for his son. Yes. And I think that's a common, it's a common, yes, a common practice in our culture. It's a very bad practice in our yes. culture. Because you think people think it's cool for just to have have sex with a, a woman and leave her with the child and the boy, the child growing up doesn't even know all these, all these things that he can learn from the father. However, this story shows how important that the father, how important the father is in our lives and our families. Now to my father, this man right here in the blue chair. Thank you for being there for me and for all the advice and your unselfish ways and gifts. And I hope that I will learn from you someday when I become a father. Yeah. On behalf of my sister, my mother, and I, happy Father's Day.
very good. Very good. Nice to see you, Mr. Bonito. Bless the name of the Lord. As we continue, at this time, our sister Shantia Jones will come to minister in singing. But before she comes, after her comes our sister Kimberly Simon. She is a student at the University of the West Indies and she is a part of this church where she was a little girl. Wherever it was, she was a part of this church from she was a little girl and she has a story that she can tell you. But um, Kim is a forthright young lady and she really aspired to what she wants to do. She's not backing down. And she's always there when you call her, even though she says, I don't know if I can do it. But then she comes and she does it. And this morning, she will share a word after our psalmist sings. God bless you. Whether you have a physical father now, or the father is in heaven, our main father is Jesus. Amen? Amen. As I lay me down, heaven hear me now, I'm lost without a cause, after giving it my all. Winter oh, storm has come and darkened my sun after all that I've been through. Who on earth could I turn to? I look to you. I look to you. After all my strength is gone, in you I can be strong. I look to you, I look to you. When melodies are gone, in you.
Good morning, everyone. What a privilege to be in the house of the Lord this morning. You know, I'm always, always, always looking forward to, you know, give back, you know, any way I can. As we're saying, you know, <laughs> if I'm called up and I always try to put my best foot forward, so. I'm honored to present today on the topic, A Father's Love. And I mean, as my fellow presenter presented earlier on Luke 15, I mean, he did quite a detailed look. And right now I'll just provide a summary <laughs> and a new perspective, a different perspective, because, you know, perspectives are very important. And this is my perspective on this topic. So I will be taking on this presentation in the form of adjectives identifying a father or identifying the love of a father and these will be my three U's that embodies a father's love. Now a father's love is understanding. We see that in Luke 15 and verse 12 where it says, and the younger of them said to his father, father give me my portion of goods that falleth to me. And we all know what happened next. He went out, he wasted, he squandered, and then when all hope was lost now, he had to, you know, try and find some way to, you know, fix the situation that he had been in. But when his father came to him, his father knew that, you know, more than likely this was what was going to happen. But guess what? A father understands and a father knows that we won't remain children forever and therefore we have to learn to make decisions on our own. He understood that yes, his son was probably going to go out there and, you know, not make the best decisions, but he had to allow him this opportunity to go out there and experience it for himself because then he would have a greater appreciation of what he had been trying to teach him all this time. Now, even though he went out and he made poor decisions, we see where his love, his father's love, was unconditional. In verse 20, he said, And he rose, this is the son, and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Now, this indicates it is indicated that he knew his son, even though by now he would have been dirty after staying with swine, even though he would have probably smelled. <laughs> right. You know, he knew his son because this is his little boy that he has been growing from he was a young man. So he went and he embraced his son and he took the best things for him, gave him a ring, he gave him his shoes, the best robe, he gave him the best of everything. And he celebrated even, you know, despite of his current condition. And even though the son probably thought at this time that he was worthy, as he said in um, verse 19, I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. But his father had another opinion. His father knew that in spite of what you have done, you will always remain my son. And he ensured that he showed his son this. Now, we move on to the last view that I'll be pre presenting on today. And this is, a father's love is unwavering. And this was seen in verse 24 where he says, For my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. In verse 27, he said he, he just wanted to know that his son was home, safe and sound. And regardless of his poor decisions, or even by now, you know, his elder son, his eldest son was jealous, you know, because he couldn't understand how he could still love his son that went out and, you know, he was staying there and doing all the right thing. But the father ensured that he stood resolute to let his sons understand that no matter what, I will continue to love you. And, uh, you know, these will be my three views that I present on today on a father's love. And I want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers that are in the house. And uh, also a very happy birthday to my best friend, Chantel Jones. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 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 Praise the
I told her, even though she said she can't, she can end up doing a good thing. Bless the Lord for the young people who we are having. The Lord is grooming them in all areas. Amen? Amen. And this morning, as we sit and listen, one of the best musicians of this century, who the Lord has trained and have been using, this morning, let's sit and relax as our brother Andrew will give the plates. <laughs> 